Welcome. Welcome to Emmanuel Episcopal Church on Orcas Island. We're delighted that you're joining us virtually here at our beautiful church, getting ready for Christmas on this third Sunday of Advent. Please join in our prayers, praying at your home with the parts that are in bold. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Please stand as you're able and let us join together in prayers of penitence in this season of Advent. Heavenly Father, you call us to prepare for the coming of your Son. Forgive us our unreadiness to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were proclaimed by John the Baptist. Help us also to prepare your way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you speak through the prophets. Make us attentive to hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise, praise to the, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. join now in the reciting of the song of Mary. We'll begin with my side, Linda and myself, and we'll say it antiphonally. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me and holy is your name. 
You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown the strength with your arm and scatter the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and set the rich away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy. The promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory, Glory to the Father, to the Father and, and to the Son, and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is, now, is now, and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming to the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed, did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. And then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Holy Spirit, touch my lips, open our hearts, and transform our lives and the entire cosmos to reflect more and more your divinity. Amen. Amen. 
We are in such difficult times, and I want to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that we're surrounded by fear, financial hardship for many, unemployment, hunger, closing of businesses, political instability, fear, mental health crises, deaths of COVID approaching now 300,000. And many of us are tired. But here we are at Emmanuel, gathering for worship, virtually through our screens, you're joining us, and for almost nine months now. And nevertheless, we continue to attend. Um, Bill and I were talking, around 100 people are watching our worship services every Sunday for morning prayers. And throughout the week, we gather in different meetings and gatherings to sustain our own uh, lives and our own hearts. And it is important to recognize how our faith, our prayers, the stories we share are a source of strength and inspiration and hope in these difficult times. And this is what the season of Advent is all about. The season of Advent tells us, yes, it can be hard, but at the horizon we see the light coming forth. There can be the experience of these dark, swirling clouds that probably seem that they overcome the light. But the promise of Advent is that the light will triumph. Many know that I love the tradition of the Jesse tree, but at the same time I can understand how many hate it. It's such an ugly tree. It's not Christmas-like. There's no leaves, no green. They're just dead branches. What an ugly thing to put up for Christmas. But it is precisely that symbolism that is meaningful for me. Jesse, which was King David's father, was the promise. And there's a beautiful prophecy in Isaiah that says, A shoot will come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. Related to that, in the book of Job, we read, there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. What a beautiful promise. And every time I see the Jesse tree, that dead tree, that is what reminds me. There is hope. And this is what Advent, I believe, is all about. That there can be hope even in the most hopeless of places. That is the voice of John the Baptist that we've been hearing in the last couple of weeks. Out in the desert, dressed in camel's hair, this crazy figure, there is hope, he announces. In today's canticle, we hear Mary in her beautiful canticle, the Magnifica, Jesus' mother. Next Monday, we will hear again about Mary. And I like that during the Advent, the, the role of women is upheld. Many times, sadly, the church has dismissed women. As you know, Mary Magdalene, then she was sadly uh, misinterpreted and placed as a prostitute. Mary, the mother of Jesus, many times is just presented as this kind of humble a figure, submissive, complying, demure, subdued little girl. But listen to the story. Today, the Magnificat is not the song of this little, meek little girl. It is the voice of a strong woman, and in a sense, a radical. Out of the depths, she says, I am who rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on this, the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. That is the voice of this Humble Mary, it's a strong woman. Then precisely in a very, very difficult situation, she sings, and it's an example for me at least, in difficult times to look on her. Yesterday, talking about Mary, was the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And many of you know the story, probably, 
But many times we don't really understand. There's a very, very deep story going beyond the superficial and folkloric that usually accompanies Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is a, an amazing story that is well uh, worth to explore. There are many layers to it. Next week, I'll put some of that information in our weekly e -news. Some of you know it's the beginning of the conquest of Mexico. After the Spanish had conquered, the indigenous people destroyed much of their culture, their traditions. This Indian man called Juan Diego has an experience of encountering our Blessed Mother. And I would like to share a reading from the Nikan Mopoak, which is a 1560 manuscript written not in Spanish, but in Nahuatl, the language, the indigenous language of the time. And this is what the story says. And it's not the whole story, just a little part of it. Juan Diego returned and right at the top of the mountain, he saw the lady from heaven at the spot where he saw her the first time. Seeing her, he fell down before her and said, Lady, the smallest of my daughters, my child, I went where you sent me to fulfill your mandate, go with difficulty to the seat of the bishop. I saw him and exposed your message. He received me graciously and listened attentively, but I understood by his response that he believes that it is I who makes the request of building your temple, and that perhaps is not your command. I strongly beg, lady, my child, that you send instead of me someone who is known, respected, and esteemed. If we entrust your message to someone like that, he is sure to be believed. The bishop does not believe me because I'm a lesser man. I'm small. I'm a no one. And you, my child, the least of my daughters, lady, you send me to a place where I do not belong. Forgive me if I cause you great sorrow. Our lady replied, Listen, my son, I understand, but need you to know that I have many servants and messengers whom I can send to do my bidding, yet I choose you. You are the one that I strictly command to go again tomorrow to see the bishop. Tell him once more who sends you, and that it is my will for a temple to be built in my honor. Tell him that the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, is the one who sends you. Juan Diego replied, My lady, my child, I will do what you ask. I'll do your will. But perhaps I will not be heard with pleasure. I know that it will be difficult for them to believe me. Can you imagine what this event meant for this indigenous man after the brutal conquest, his whole land had been sacked. And this vision of a woman like him, who presented herself as the mother of God, the compassionate mother, precisely at the hill where the Spaniards had destroyed a temple to Tonantzin, the great mother, the mother goddess of the indigenous people of Mexico. And it's precisely her that presents herself with dark skin, as we know her in Spanish, La Morenita, the dark lady, dancing their traditional dance, surrounded by the sun and the moon at her feet, the great mother chooses the lowly Juan Diego for this important mission. Yes, in the midst of these trying times, our faith presents us with many beautiful stories and prayers that give us strength and hope to continue on. May we open our eyes and our hearts to them. Let us pray. O oh God of love, you bless your people at El Tepeyac with the presence of La Virgen de Guadalupe. Grant that her example of love to the poor and forsaken may stir our faith to recognize all people as members of one family. Teach us to follow in the way you have prepared for us, that we may honor one another in word and action, sharing with her your commonwealth of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us join together now for the prayers. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed Hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your will will be be done done. on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive Forgive us our sins as we we forgive those who sin against against us. us. Save Save us us from from the the time time of trial trial, and deliver deliver us us from from evil. For the the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and and the glory are yours now now and forever. forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. And deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our lives. Merciful God of peace, your work, spoken by the prophets, restores your people's life and hope. Fill our hearts with the joy of your saving grace, that we may hold fast to your great goodness, and in our lives proclaim your justice in all the world. We ask this of you, who are our peace, our truth, our way. Amen. Amen. The Prayers of the People Dear God, in these precious Advent days of winter, we pray for your bountiful grace and mercy to speedily bring peace and healing for the divided world. We pray in the hope which Advent brings for peace and healing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are grateful for the open and loving ministry of Emmanuel Parish for those whose joy and dedication sustain this church, especially through these challenging, changing times of isolation and online services. We pray for our vestry, for Karen and Lisa, for Bill and Margie, Mary Ann, and our beloved dedicated priests, Father Berto and Father Hugh, for Bishop Greg and presiding Bishop Michael, Lord, may the light of your countenance keep your spirit in their hearts and your wisdom in their service. Bless them and nourish them as they serve with your love. We pray for your power, guidance, and blessings on all churches of God throughout the world. May they be your messengers of light for connection and healing. Lord, may the light of your countenance open and bless their hearts and guide their ways. We pray for your strength over our fear, for your great might to come among us, for the safety, respect, and equality of all people in the United States and all the world. Lord, bless the many heroes who work tirelessly with hospitals, nursing homes, food banks, and the homeless, the firefighters, deputies, and all who respond in service to others. We pray for the United States for our democracy, for following the Bill of Rights for all people, and for our elected leaders to follow your will, Lord, for the good of the earth and all people. Lord, may the light of your countenance countenance open their their hearts hearts to serve with wisdom and inspiration of your love. love. May divisions divisions be healed through service to those in need. We pray for the earth, climate, water, and the habitat you have created for our survival. May they be a high priority for our urgent awareness. Connect us to action for the restoration and help of our planet home. Lord, may the nations of the world come together in changing our views of the earth into actions of respect and sustainability. We thank you, Lord, for nourishing our souls energizing our minds and feeding our bodies that we may serve others as taught by your Son, Jesus Christ. With With gratitude gratitude for our abundant blessings, blessings, Lord, Lord, we have have come come to do your will. 
We pray for the safety and healing for the many people in unbearable circumstances, for the homeless, the hungry, the prisoners, the injured, and the fearful, those who are ill in all nations and religions. May people of abundant means reach out in service to share with those less fortunate, that both may know the gift of your divine peace. Lord, Lord may the light of your countenance open, open our, our hearts, hearts that, we that we may share your love, love and service, service to, others. to others. We pray for those you know are in need of restoration and health of body, mind, and spirit, and those we name here. Brian, Brian Challen, Tom, Tom, Eleanor, Eleanor Judy, Judy and Doug, Linda, Lena, and Jim, Marilyn, Marilyn Karen, Karen, Mary, Mary Joyce, Joyce, Judy, Judy Kelly, Kelly, Evelyn, Evelyn Sarah, Nadine, Cheryl, Patty, Patty, Cynthia and D, Fred, Fred John, John, Autumn, Autumn Catherine, Catherine, Karen, Karen Lorinda, Lorinda, Christian, Christian Cecilia, Cecilia, Margaret, Margaret Sam, Sam, Steve, Steve Nancy, Nancy and Ken, Kaylin, Joe, Joe and Bonnie, Louise, Bobby, Bobby David, David, and Marilyn. Marilyn. May they be filled may with the healing power, power of your presence and peace. And may, and may you inspire hearts, hearts and, and hands to reach, reach out to them. them. We pray for those who have gone before us to your heavenly kingdom and those we hold in our hearts. As, As Blessed Mary, Mary proclaimed, my spirit, my spirit rejoices, rejoices in God my Savior. We thank you, Lord, for your constant presence in our hearts. Help us create quiet time to receive your guidance and blessings as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Keep us, Keep us not, not on our, our agenda, but on but your, our your Lord, for that is, is the joy, joy we, we seek. seek. Shine, Shine on, on us with the illumination, illumination of the true light. Let us pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. O oh God, our times, times are in your hand. hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Robert, Robert Tucker, Ken Mello, and Barb Melman, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. Celebrating God, whose love unfolds the whole of life, who calls us into union with you and with one another, and who in creation blessed the partnership of marriage. On this wedding anniversary, grant to your servants Dick and Deborah Hansen, and to all who celebrate with them, thankful hearts for all that is past, joyful hearts for this day's blessing, and, and hopeful, hopeful hearts for what, what is still to come. come. In, In the, the name of God, God the Maker, Son, Son and Spirit, one, one God in community. community. Amen. Amen. Let's join now in the prayer of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed, fed your people in the wilderness with the, with the bread of angels, and you, and you sent, sent Jesus to be for us, for us the bread, bread of life. In this time, when we cannot gather as a parish family to share, to share these, these gifts of bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, we ask, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Awaken also our spiritual memory and imagination so that we may feel your presence as we call to mind each other's faces, voices, and stories. For we believe that nothing, neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love, from the love of God that binds, that binds us together in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.